Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad you're here, maybe watching this later. I, I personally am very excited about having Sherry with me today. I think this is a topic that nobody wants to talk about, and I'm so grateful that we are. So thank you so much for being here this morning and sharing with us the message about how to comfort other people who are grieving and you know maybe even something for ourselves. So why don't you go ahead? I don't really like to read bios, and here's why. is because okay. people don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, but I do like to know how this, how you came to this topic. Um, I think a lot of us as coaches and speakers and, and authors, which I know you were all of those things, uh, we come to our message because of something that happened in our life. So right. if you wouldn't mind sharing where this all came from. And I'm grateful that you're here with us to well, know. thank you. Thanks, Vicki. I'm, I'm so delighted to be talking with you again. You're so positive and upbeat and a shining light in this world where we need it more than ever right now. So my name is Sherry Dunleavy. And, um, you know, uh, people in my neck of the woods who know me probably remember me as, in my career as a radio talk show host, a television news anchor. Um, but what a lot of people may or may not know about me is I'm also a bereaved mom. My husband and I lost our second son, Brandon, 21 years ago, and um, it was very public. I was on, on television at the time, um, and we were lifted up and supported and loved through this most difficult chapter of our lives, but at the same time, some of the people that were closest to us just dropped out of our lives completely, mm -hmm. and as I started my healing journey, um, which it was, let me just tell you, um, that was extremely painful to think mm -hmm. that, you know, you have these friends and you think they're going to be there for you and, and you can't find them anywhere, you know? And so, um, but I, you know, I was in pain in other ways that, that hurt and it was very disappointing. And it was like a, it was like kicking someone when they were down. But through my healing journey, I, I began to wonder why that happened, you know, and mm -hmm. and um, actually it was six years later when one of my best friends called me back after a six year hiatus mm -hmm. and just kind of wanted to pick up where we left off. And I thought, where were you? You, mm -hmm. you know, like I can't even begin to pick up where we left mm -hmm. off. It, it's just not possible. That's when I started thinking, what was that all about? Like, why wouldn't people step out and, and support you when you needed them most? And that began my journey of thinking about that question. And I came up with three answers, but as a result of that, I, I kept looking for resources. I thought, if only there was something out there that could help, would have been able to help them, maybe we could still be friends today. Mm -hmm. And I thought it hurt so bad. I just didn't want anyone else to feel that way. So as I kept looking for the resources, as I kept Googling it or going to Amazon or walking into Barnes and Noble, I, I couldn't find it, but I kept walking away with that. You're not going to find it because you're the one that needs to create it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, isn't that how coaches and every get their start? They, 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 they create something they wish they had. Or they create something that um, worked for them and they just have to share it with everyone else. So that's pretty much how this all came to be. And I, I thought, I, what do you mean? You know, like I felt like really I was spiritually guided. The Holy Spirit was asking me to, to write this. And, and I kept saying, no, I wrote news copy. I don't write books. But now in hindsight, I, I realized that maybe my career in television was doing exactly that. It was setting me up for this. I did know how to interview people. I was not the expert in this, but everyone who has suffered death or divorce or cancer or lost their job or lost a loved one to suicide or lost a child and they're still standing and surviving and thriving today, well, they can provide me with the answers. And so I interviewed them. And that's how this book came to be. So these, you know, this isn't what the experts with degrees are saying is good and how to help people. This is from the people who've been there. And this is what they say has helped them. 
And that's what I love about this because I think they are the true experts. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, as someone who um, want to support someone, one of my friends or whatever, when someone passes, or like you said, there's even job changes or job losses, there's a lot of loss that happens. And there's been a lot of loss that's happened for all of us. I mean, so one thing we have in common right now is there's been a whole lot of loss, a lot of change. Um, I didn't always know what to say. So I appreciate you helping us through this journey so that we can remain friends or be closer to our loved ones and not feel awkward or out of place or am I bothering them, you know, at a time that they may need me more than ever. So I, I appreciate you being out there and spreading the word. And you're right. It is all for most coaches and speakers. It is a, in my opinion, a divine calling um, I know for me, I said no many times <laughs> and then that wasn't a choice anymore. So I appreciate you sharing that because a lot of people don't share that either. But a lot of times it's a voice that we hear that says you, you can't find the answers, you need to find them. Or, right. you know, watching people struggle and saying, I know how I can help them and right. stop being, stop hiding from that experience. Right. So thank you for sharing that too. So this is how I know you help others. I put this in the, in the bar and this is your book. So how can I help? And they can get that where? They can get that um, on Amazon or um, in any bookstore. Um, they can also go to my website, sherrydunlevy.com if they want a personalized copy for someone. Awesome. And, you know, someone, I thought this was really interesting when, when I was asking for a review, someone said, this is just as useful of a, as a book as a cookbook for someone, you know, it's really the recipe of, of, you know, finding different recipes and then you find one that interests you or one that fits you. And that's the one that you can choose. So this is like an option of a lot of different recipes for um, how you can help and support one another. What I wanted to say though, to let everybody off the hook, Vicki, is that there are, you're never going to find a magic phrase that's going to uh, make this all better because one doesn't exist. And even if you are awkward at it, remember being awkward is better than not being there at all. We're awkward because we don't practice. We don't practice. And so the more you practice this, the more natural it becomes. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And Again, that doesn't mean that someone has to die to practice, right? No, so. no, no, not at all. There's always, I mean, think about right now what we're going through during COVID. How many people are lonely? How many people are down? How many people need our support? There are so many ways that we can do this and we can offer it. It doesn't have to be a death, but this gives us the practice in reaching out. I say, Fear is what holds us back. We have to remember this isn't about our fear. This is about our love for the other person, right? And our wanting to support the other person. So we have to step out of our fear and step out into love. That's absolutely beautiful. And I love that it's not about our fear. It's about love. So mm -hmm. as awkward as it feels, it's still given with love and to move past it. So thanks, thank you for sharing that. I was just gonna ask you one of your tips out of your book, and I think that one was brilliant, but I'm sure you have more. <laughs> I do. And, you know, when I was pulling people, I found some similarities. So after I was writing the book um, and in the process of writing the book, I thought, you know what? I wonder, like, if I were to compile like a top 10 list, I wonder what they would be, what the commonalities would be. Mm -hmm. But there were two commonalities that were so so out there, so, so far ahead of every other tip and suggestion in the book that I had to isolate just those two. So there is no top 10 list. There's a, a top two list that people thought helped them more than anything else. The first one is just be there, be there for them. Okay. Be there can take on a whole, you know, you can be there virtually for them. You know, now that's how we have to be there mm -hmm. for most people. OK, so that can be through phone calls, through Zooms, through uh, text messaging, through voicemail. OK, um, 
And the second one, and, and 100% of the people said, be there. It's the number one thing. Just let me know you're there for me. Just be there for me. You don't have to say a word. Sit on the couch and let me cry, right? Um, and the and the second thing, and not it wasn't 100%, but I would say it's like 98% was pray. The power of prayer was so important to people. One woman said, you know, just to know that someone took a moment out of their day to stop down and pray on my behalf is so meaningful. Mm -hmm. It meant everything. And another woman said, I, the prayers were actually palpable. I could feel them. And I am an example of that too. When my father was hospitalized um, about three years ago, I, I went out on social media and asked for prayer. And honestly, the energetic uh, feeling of that prayer honestly kept me and my family elevated through that whole grueling time. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that story. And I've heard that story many, many times. Uh, however, again, it's one of those things people don't talk about. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. And there's a lot of science behind it, too. So mm -hmm. um, they are energetically showing in quantum physics how prayer works. And there are many, many physicians now who do pray before surgery because they understand not only the science, but the emotional and, and psychology behind it. So thank you for sharing that. I really do appreciate it. Anything else you want to share with the listeners about this experience or in your book? Yeah, I think one of the things that I, I want, I don't put anything like there's not do's and don'ts. Okay, there is helpful and not so helpful. <laughs> one of the main phrases that I think is not so helpful is a phrase that absolutely every one of us has said, I have to stop myself even to this day to stop saying, and that's if there's anything I can do, let me help. OK, here is why that phrase is not so helpful. It's not so helpful because you're putting it back on the person who's hurting and grieving and you're making them responsible for something that you want to do for them. And that's that's too much pressure. I know when people told me that, I thought, I'm never going to tell you anything that I need. I don't even know what day it is. I don't even know what I need. Right. So a better way to phrase that is to offer a couple of suggestions of things that you're willing to do. Can mm -hmm. I make some phone calls? for you? Can I come over and cut your grass? Do you guys need me to go run errands for you? You know, something that you're willing to do that maybe they haven't thought about and they can say, yeah, I would love that. Or, you know, I never even thought about my grass. I don't think I need it now, but maybe next week, could you check back with me? You know, just offer something that you're willing to do to help support them and, and let them know that you're willing to do it. And then I would say, take it one step further. And in a couple weeks, reach back out again, because they're probably not going to call you. Right. Don't leave it in. Don't leave the ball in their court. They, they're they juggling too much right now. And giving a tangible, tangible example of those type of things that we can do uh, is very helpful because I personally wouldn't have even thought about that. Uh, I know I was just speaking to a friend of mine and, and her husband passed away about three years ago. And she goes, the first six months, I, I don't even know what happened. I, I have no, you know, I have no memory of it. Mm -hmm. So they are in that very confused state and being able to suggest to them what you can do for them mm -hmm. when they haven't even thought about it, or perhaps are thinking about it and are really concerned about it is very, very helpful. Or, and now, you know, today, sometimes we're kind of still stuck at home. We're still kind of go through, through this experience. There's still other ways we can touch them in some way um, without you know going maybe going to their home do you have any idea like i know you talked about phone calls is there any other thing else that they can do right now if they can't get over to someone's home oh yeah i mean like there's so much that you can do you can you can send them gift cards you can send them a card you know one of the 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 21 years ago, my son died and I still have cards that people sent me today. But when you send a card, send a heartfelt message to them. Um, maybe if you knew their loved one and their loved one, you have a story, you know, of, about their loved one. You know, maybe you were a little kid and, and you remember going over to their house and their mother always baked the best chocolate chip cookies. Share that with them. You're giving them a gift and, and keep in contact with them. 
you know, most people after the funeral, after the funeral luncheon, and, and rarely are we even having funerals and funeral luncheons now during this pandemic. So, you know, people aren't even coming around, yeah. but it usually stops after that. That's when they need you the most. They've been surrounded by all this uh, love and energy and then everyone leaves. And that's when they need the support the most. So keep it going, you know, send a card every month, make a phone call. Even if they don't feel like talking, leave a message so they can hear it. Those are things that you can do that lets them know even, you know, and don't wait for them to call you back, okay? Say, you don't even have to call me back, but I'm gonna keep calling and checking on you. I know someday you're gonna be ready to pick up the phone and talk. And that'll be great. But until then, I just want to let you know I love you and I'm praying for you. And uh, I'm going to check back with you next week to see if you need anything. That is so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. That is so beautiful. And now with the age of, vis uh, of videos, they can actually do short videos and just send them to their friend, telling them their stories in person with right. their loved ones. So that's an option too. A lot of people don't feel comfortable in front of video, but it is an option. It is. So I'm going to post here. There's, there's several ways you can get a hold of, of Sherry. Uh, this is some of her Facebook groups, so you can contact her about joining some of these, these groups. And she is also very, very positive. She wants to spread joy into the world and just good things. And there are a lot of good things that don't always get acknowledged. And I am on these groups, and some things make me chuckle. <laughs> great right others go oh you know that's so sweet so it's, they're very beautiful websites that you can get in touch with her and learn more about what she's doing and she also has i'd like for you to tell about this offer you have for anybody who's interested Right. So, you know, I know a lot of people, they, they don't step out because they're afraid they're going to make people, you know, they're, they're going to say the wrong thing and it's going to hurt someone, you know. So I have created this little kind of like cheat sheet for you of four things you should never say to a grieving person. And what it does is it also then translates it into what might be a better way to say something to them. So you can have this little cheat sheet, just keep it, you know, uh, in your drawer. And anytime that you have someone that, you know, needs support, you can pull this this out and and you can you can help them with it and if you go to sherrydunlevy.com it's yours for free oh that's awesome thank you for that that opportunity that's very generous well i am grateful that you're here um just to you, you make this conversation so easy you know you make it seem like it's just part of life and it should we shouldn't be concerned about it um, on the levels that we are and feel awkward about it. So I appreciate you sharing that and shedding light on that. But I have one question I ask all of the people that I interview. Okay. And this question is a really, really serious question and it will actually save relationships and it will save the, the world in a way. And so the question is, does a toilet paper roll go over or under? <laughs> Just as long as there's toilet paper, who cares? <laughs> That's my answer too. <laughs> but I am surprised when I ask that question how many are serious about one or the other. So, um, so my 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 cheerfulness too is it just puts them on. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend that comes to my house, and anytime he sees that it's it's under, he switches it to over it. Right? I don't care. Just just make sure that there's toilet paper there, right? And especially when there was a shortage. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Well, again, thanks so much for being here. If you want to uh, reach out to Sherry, there's several ways to do it that's in this video. And please do so. She's a very kind, generous person, and I know she'd love to help. Get her book on Amazon and start being more comfortable being around this conversation. Uh, it's There's nothing to be awkward about. It's going to happen to all of us. It's going to happen <laughs> to all those that we love. And this is just a better way to be more prepared for it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. You are, thank you so much for shining your light, Vicki. Oh, thanks. Thanks. All right. Bye everyone. See you next time.